What's going on guys, Jermaine Francois here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This video is gonna be a very open video and I, I'm pretty open with you guys across the channel anyways, but this is me revealing some of the pros and cons of what it's actually like to have an OnlyFans agency. I'm gonna reveal the whole business model as a whole, what we've gone through, my experiences, my ups, my downs, and what I kind of feel the main pros and cons are if you're just looking to kind of get in this business. To give you guys an idea of the roller coaster that you're about to indulge on. So sit back, relax, hit the like, subscribe button, and let's get into the video. So guys, I'm gonna start with the negatives. So I'm not the negatives, I'm gonna start with the cons of you know, running an OnlyFans agency and what it actually takes to actually be successful and uh, actually make money, right? If you're if you have an agency and you have models but you're not making revenue, you do not have a business, you have a hobby, right? So when you have an actual business, you actually generate revenue, okay? That's the main thing about having businesses. So first thing first, one of the main cons is obviously it's in the adult industry, okay? There's no hiding it, there's no hiding it, right? You are in the adult industry, you're selling content on behalf of the models and there is a big stigma attached to it, right? Whether it's called PIMS, ePIMS, Wi-Fi PIMS, whatever gets called on Twitter, YouTube, etc. right? That is the reality of the, uh, the business, right? We're not PIMS or anything like that, we are marketers at the end of the day. My life's been marketing for the last four years now um, and this is just another stage of marketing, right? It's just a different product, a different industry, right? But there is a stigma attached to it, right? Whether you obviously communicate this with friends, family, whatever, it is the word OF and the word OnlyFans has a big stigma attached to it. It is getting a lot better now, I will say. It is getting a lot better than it was, you know, two years ago, okay? But there is still a small stigma attached to that. Um, but that's just the reality of what we're dealing with, right? So that's point number one, is the adult industry such a stigma attached to this business module of OnlyFans marketing. Next is the late nights. This is something a lot of uh, gurus out there on YouTube, etc. won't really speak about, and that is the late nights that you experience. And I feel like, I don't know why they don't talk about it, right? Late nights in regards to like chatting, when you first bring on your first few models, right? You really should be chatting first to understand the dynamics, how to sell, how to obviously access the vault, how to queue, how to post on the feed. You need to kind of learn those skills yourself first before then outsourcing to a team, to, a, to sexes, to chatters, whatever you want to call them, right? If you don't understand the, um, the service itself, how are you gonna hire for it? How are you gonna measure KPIs? You genuinely need to understand how the product works and how the service works before you can outsource and delegate to a team. That means, you can imagine, in this industry, especially if you're working with a model in your home country, you're gonna experience a lot of late nights. That's because that's when the buy-in window is at, right? It's where most of these guys are essentially like active and most horny and all that good stuff, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of late nights, right? And I have, I still have Invoke Marketing, which is my paid ads e-commerce agency. So I was doing e Invoke Marketing from like, 8.30 a.m. to like 12, 1 p.m. That's when I was doing like the deep work for that. And I was doing OF from like you know, the afternoon to like the mid evening. And then I was doing sexing and chatting um, around like 8 p.m. to like 11.30, 12 p.m., 12 a.m., right? And it gets even later sometimes. And that's just a sacrifice that you have to make. And any agency owner that tells you, you know, hire chatter straight away when you first hire an agency. I don't, I personally agree with it. If you look at the fundamentals of business building, you can't hire for a service that you don't have 100% full clarity on. Okay, and a lot of guys won't tell you that um, because they want to you know, embrace the whole entrepreneurial building a business with your culture and having teams, this and that, this and that, um, as soon as possible. But, you know, reality is you can hire chatter too early and uh, you can spend money, okay, and lose money. Um, just because you're not able to measure and get the most out of your team, right? So learn the skill first to its full capacity and then outsource when you can't actually keep up with the workload. Best way to run a service-based business. Next is the cost of communication. This isn't really a big con, but there is a lot of communication going on, right? Between yourself, the model, the teams, etc. There is a lot of communication going on. Even nowadays, my phone, my phones, I've got two phones right now, one for work, one for personal. My personal phone I use on my like personal Instagram and that's what I do like outreach with, that's where I communicate with models, do shout outs, etc. That's popping off all the time. And my work phone is popping off all the time between the Uni Astro Academy chat and like my WhatsApp groups with all my models itself, right? So my phone is constantly pinging, 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 pinging throughout the whole day up until like 11, 12 a.m. And even still, I've got my chat is messaging me at that time, like if they're asking for customs, etc. So I usually get to bed around like 11, 30, 12 nowadays, which isn't healthy. I know I need to fix that, but um, I'm just really like immersing myself within this whole space right now. Um, just have a quick tea break. This is a Jasmine Chinese tea. If you guys have never had Jasmine Chinese tea before, this shit hits, right? Especially, especially good after like dinner and stuff. Moving on. So the fourth coin is the constant account bands. Obviously we are black hat marketing at the end of the day. So we're gonna face a lot of account bands. We are going against the terms of service of like Snapchat, Instagram, Tinder, Bumble, Plenty of Fish, like all these dating apps that we're going against. We're going against their terms of service, which means we're you know, kind of promoting things that you're not meant to promote on the app, which accounts for a lot of account bans that you will face in the industry, right? And that's just normal, right? You are black hat marketing at the end of the day. Nevertheless, it's still fucking annoying. So they're the main cons that I would say that you kind of associate when having an OnlyFans marketing agency. 
the pros definitely outweigh the cons and you're gonna see this now, right? So the pros, the money, right? Hands down, the money is amazing because you're essentially selling a product that's always gonna sell. Sex is always gonna sell. There's always gonna be lonely men out there. It's bulletproof, it's recession proof. So we, if we go for a recession, which we are right now, but we're probably gonna hit it a lot harder. It's recession proof because you know, people get laid off the jobs. It's sad to say, uh, these men get laid off the jobs. They're at home doing nothing. Where do you think that money's gonna go to, right? They're lonely, they're gonna seek instant gratification they're going to seek instant dopamine through the internet and yourself your chatters and your models are going to be right there knocking on the door right um and that's the good thing about this space right we are recession proof we're covid proof and if there is covid everyone's in lockdown imagine everyone's going to be on the phones that's going to be even better for our industry right so it's pretty much a bulletproof industry and there's not much that can take this down um and that's what makes this a really really great business model right like we are recession proof we're covid proof pandemic proof it's an incredible business to be a part of and um, the next is the margins because we hire outside your your main country so i'm in the uk london right now because i hire outside the uk like the philippines argentina and uh, montenegro i hire outside um, the uk which means their salaries are a lot lower but it also means that they get paid a lot more over there than they would get paid here, right? So if I pay, you know, a chat of $500 a month, let's say, that $500 in the UK to someone here is absolutely nothing. But in the Philippines, that's a lot of money to them, okay? And that's a good chunk that they can use to take, take, take care of their families, right? So the money goes a lot further, but what that means for us is the margins are really, really great. So I maintain around 70 to 75% margins net right now. Um, I'm looking, I am testing quite heavily recently actually, so that may drop the margins slightly, but it's only due to my own case. But on a good month, like I'll maintain 75% uh, margins, okay, net. And um, that's after OnlyFans fees, it's after paying staff, that's literally 70% net that I will keep um, in, in the business, right? And that's just because we hire outside and there's not many costs associated to it. There's not even that many softwares associated to this business model, which makes it even better. Whereas in Vogue, my agency, there's so many softwares associated to this, which means a lot does get, um, which does bump the margins down at the end of the day. Next is location freedom. We are an e-com business at the end of the day, right? We work behind a screen. All we need is a laptop, really good internet and access to like WhatsApp and Teams. If you have phones, it's another story, um, but follow my strategy. If you don't really be using phones nowadays because that shit is uh, not as profitable nowadays, but location freedom we i can do this wherever i want like i'm literally traveling a week from today and i'm gonna be going away for like two three weeks right and i'm still gonna be working like i'm still gonna get paid the exact same business is gonna make the exact same client's gonna receive the exact same service everything's gonna be the same but i'm in a warmer location right which is amazing and that's the location freedom that provides from this business and that's gonna be rid off as a business expense because technically I'm going for business, right? Um, with content creation and content shoots for the agency. So next is it's a very good cash cow business. Like I said, because of the hell with healthy profit margins, like it's very good cash injection into your business, into your bank. Um, it means that you then can use that business to stack cash. You can invest the cash. You can scale the business further. So much opportunities that possess with this. Whereas a lot of businesses like drop shipping or starting brands, like their net margins are like 15, 20% absolutely net, right? So let's say they make $100, their net would be like 15 to $20. Only fans agency, you make $100 as an agency, okay? After you pay your chatters, you'll probably keep like $70 from that, right? So margins are really, really healthy, which makes it a very, 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 very good cash cow business. Next is a network through this YouTube channel alone. I've met so many unique, incredible people, right? Not just the students that have come through the Only Astro Academy, um, just the people that I've met through like networking through different Telegram groups, other agency owners doing a lot, lot, lot more than me. I've learned a whole bunch from these guys. It's generally filled with incredible, incredible entrepreneurs, right? And that's the great thing about this e-commerce based business, right? Like you're gonna meet incredible people that are in the exact same shoes as you, which means you can relate to them, you can learn from them, you can adapt. You can just attain a whole wealth of knowledge which comes in this business. And because it's like a new business on the market right now, you're getting a lot of entrepreneurs from other businesses. They jumping into this, starting up their agencies and obviously taking advantage of the incredible opportunity that we're in right now, right? Which means, you get the opportunity to network with these people if you're in the right place. So that's another good thing that I'll say that comes with this industry. But overall, guys, to give you a quick recap, what it's actually like to run an OnlyFans agency, the first few months, um, you're gonna be in the trenches, you're gonna be hustling out, trying to sign models, trying to deliver that first proof of concept, I think is the fairest way to say it, whether that's through 16, signing models and scaling actual models. Once you scale a model to like five, seven, 10 K per month, you get that proof of concept, right? And you understand it works. You can imagine if we take 50% of that, you can scale a model to 10K a month, you get 5K of that, right? You times that by three models, four models, 
you're at like 15, 20 grand a month business, okay? And that's an incredible place to be at at the end of the day, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's an incredible business model. I think that we are still reasonably early to the market. In the next year, it's gonna get saturated, as I've said on a few other businesses. I think we are in the 2019 SMMA, right? If you guys have come from that space, you know, when all these large guys in the industry were absolutely killing it right at that moment. Um, I think we're in this space right now with OnlyFans. And in a year's time, so we're gonna see the boys and the men separate. All the shit agencies are gonna go to shit. All the good agencies that have their own brand, their own actual established authority, are just gonna to continue to excel, right? So that's where I think the business is going right now. But yeah, guys, the first few months are gonna be treacherous, you're gonna be learning a lot. You're gonna get shit kicked out of you, you're gonna get projections and bans left, right, center. But if you can just hold on long enough, if you, if you can just stick at it long enough, Okay, you are gonna see success. The only way you lose is if you quit. If you can just stay at it long enough in this industry, I've literally documented my whole journey on this, on this YouTube channel. Go back, go look at all my documented journey series, right? I've literally given you guys almost like a framework and a pathway to follow to then go ahead and scale your own agencies, right? It's a lot more detailed in the academy itself, but if you do not need to invest or you don't want to invest into that, absolutely fine. Just look at my YouTube channel and I've documented that pretty much a lot of the way. Even on my TikTok, if you go on my TikTok, I even started documenting the very, very first early days of when I started my agency, okay? Um, so go look at that, and you can generally scale this, um, and you generally have the capacity to scale this, but just know that the first few weeks, first few months, are gonna be treacherous, and it's a business at the end of the day, right? If every business owner that started a business was successful, the world would be full of entrepreneurs, right? So it's meant to be hard at the end of the day. So take that in mind, bear that in mind, and uh, just really stick at it, but overall, like, incredible business opportunity that we are in right now, I am focusing 70% of my energy into only Astro and the OnlyFans business itself. I see this business scaling to 80 to 90 to 100K in the next few months just because of the amazing opportunity and the proof of concept that I've personally been given in this business, right? So hopefully that makes sense, guys. The good, the bad, the ugly about having an OnlyFans agency in 2023. Hopefully you guys gain some value and some gems out of this. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.